All right, as we're looking at section two, just a review from last week. We talked about slope, change in y over change in x, delta y over delta x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Those are all the things with slope. Today we're going to start using slope. So I want to show you the first major equation. When we graph a line, the easiest form of an equation to be in is y equals a number times x plus or minus a number. Now, we call this form slope-intercept form. And the reason it's called that is because of our general equation down here in the box. The number in front of the x is always called the slope. And the number back here, the b, is the y part of the y-intercept. And so that's always written 0, comma, b. Um, so just some, some really quick kind of overview. Each of these three equations up here at the top are examples of things that are called linear equations. The way you know they are linear, they make a line to line, is there's no squared terms, nothing's divided by x, there's no square roots, there's no absolute values, there's, it's just a normal x's and y's. That's all you need to have to have a linear equation. Now down here, you've got 2x cubed. That means it's not linear, it's a curve. This one's x squared. Do you remember when we held that chain up and it formed that U shape? Okay, that's x squared. Um, but both of these two are examples of things that are not linear equations. So when you're looking for a linear equation, you're looking for just x's and y's without any squares. And just a reminder, what did f of x, what could you replace that with? You could replace that with a y. It's interchangeable. So don't get thrown there. So what I want to do today is identify what a slope-intercept equation looks like, pull out the slope, pull out the y-intercept, and show you how to graph them. Very quick very simple in terms of you're looking for two ideas today. So let's kind of scoot down here. Remember, everything is going to base on this mx plus b. So look at this first one. y equals mx plus b. What's the value of m? Two-thirds. So we write our fraction in a horizontal format. Don't do that diagonal slash, TJ. Just do a horizontal line. So the rise is 2, the run is 3. So slope is 2 thirds. Whenever we put our y-intercept, it's going to always be 0, comma, this back number. So the y-intercept is 0, comma, 1. Does that make sense where I'm pulling those numbers from? Hopefully it's so not too, too difficult. How do I write number negative 4x minus 5? How do I write this negative 4 as a fraction? What am I going to change it to? Okay, so let's write our, our slope, negative 4 over 1. And then my y-intercept, 0, comma, negative 5. Okay? My next one, how do I write 3 as a fraction? Just 3 over 1. And what's the number back here? There isn't one, so what, is, what would the number be? Zero. So my y-intercept is zero, zero. Once again, your, y, your, your first coordinate is always zero on your y-intercept. Our last one, what's the number in front of x? It's an invisible one as a fraction. One over one. My y-intercept, zero, six. Now, I disagree with the book's philosophy here, and so I need you to make sure that when you're writing a y-intercept, you're doing it as a point. Okay? Even though the book may give you a different kind of an answer, I want you to focus. Whenever you write the y-intercept, I want you to give me a point. Zero, comma, a number. So that's just a little bit of a, a big idea there. Always write as a point. X, comma, y. All right. Moving down. Let's go the reverse way. Our general equation, let's write that right here, y equals mx plus b. If m is 3 and b is negative 2, the equation very easily becomes y equals 3x minus 2. All you're doing is sticking them in. Okay, my second one, y equals what? A fourth x plus 3. 
Okay? Just understanding the first, the first number in front of the x-act is the slope. The second number is the b value of the y-intercept. Now, let's start to move some applications. We have this graph down here, and we're asked to write an equation. Well, we need to understand what we do. We pull out. I want you to put a dot right there where it crosses the y-axis. And tell me, you can kind of barely see the grid. That's one, two, three, four. Where does it look like it crosses through the y-axis? At negative one, okay. So the y-intercept is zero, negative one, based on what Brett said. Maybe you said negative one and a half, you know, but whatever the case may be. Now, let's try to figure out the slope. As you go from left to right, is it going up? Or is it going down? It's going up. All right? So we have this point here. And I'm going to pick another point that looks to be right about there. That, to me, looks like that's 3, 1. To go from 0, negative 1 to 3, 1, I have to go up 2 and over 3. Up 2 over 3. What's my slope? Rise over run. So what's my slope there? Two-thirds. Okay, my slope is rise over run, remember. So in this case, the slope is two-thirds. Is that enough to write an equation? I would hope. Y equals two-thirds X minus one. Now your equation, Caroline, might be a little bit different if you determine that was the point, or that was the point. Maybe yours is 3, 5. But it's still the idea of you're going up 2 over 3. So your number here might be a little bit different, but realize this is 0.6. 3 over 5 is 0.6 as well. This is 0.6 repeating, so we're very close. It's still the same basic idea. And that's going to be where you pick a point. Maybe Ashley picks one, Nate picks a different one. Just because one is right, one is a little bit off, doesn't mean they're wrong. It's just where you're perceiving this. So, as we're looking, the important point is identifying that y-intercept and then figuring out what your basic slope is. Okay, questions so far? Any questions?